Here we go. I'm good right here. It's not this type of show. Said Monday. Hi, everybody. We're back. We're back. Live. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a seat. Have a seat. Let's get started. Let me straighten out my knickknacks here. There we go. Have a seat, everybody. Have a seat. Welcome to the show, everybody. It is good to be back. Do not adjust your TV. We are live. This is not a rerun. That's right. We're back. Yeah. And she's back too, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Shane Wells right over there. Hello, Shane. Good morning. How you doing? I'm good. Happy New uh, Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. I think I, we haven't seen each I other. I think we got them all. We got them all, and yeah. And you're looking rather baby face. Okay, here's the deal. Let me, it's a good audience, thing. It's a good thing. let me tell you what happened. You guys know I tell you absolutely everything, almost to my detriment. But uh, I, I get done with the radio show at about 9 a.m., so I have an hour between the radio show and this show. And usually I just have to change from my pajamas to, <laughs> I do the radio show basically in my pajamas. I have to change from my pajamas to this, the, the, the suit and tie and put on some makeup. Well, today I was running really late this morning and I didn't shave. Now, if you guys know me, whenever I go on vacation, I have two long breaks during the year. I have a July, I go away for two weeks and then the holiday break, I go away for about a week and a half. And I always grow a beard. I, I like my beard. I love it. Um, my family loves it. <laughs> Don't get too excited because the bosses here won't let me have it. Uh, they, they hate. Yeah, they. <laughs> the executive producer is clapping because what happens is if I do if I go rogue, if I go if I go Sarah Palin and I wear a beard, he. <laughs> He gets the emails from upstairs, so yeah, yeah. So anyway, I wish I could have the beer, but I can't. And I was running late this morning, and my Grizzly Adams was still on, and so I had to shave in between the show. Well, I keep, I have like a, what is it, a caboodle? Yeah. A, a, a caboodle? Yeah. Straight out of the bag. Is 90s. that what it is? Yeah. yeah. I have I have a dude caboodle and I keep <laughs> I keep my makeup and I keep my earpiece and whatever uh, wax or whatever and uh, I have a razor in there so I wasn't worried that I didn't shave this morning because I thought oh I'll just shave in between the shows dull razor uh, so the last forty it took me thirty five minutes to shave so my face is so sensitive it, oh it it hurt. It is on fire. Hope you're happy, bosses. <laughs> anyway, uh, some really fun things. I, I, uh, you know, anytime I come back from the trip, I always want to share a little something for all of you. So as you guys know, usually during the Christmas season, I love Walt Disney World. We always go. Um, and I took some video. Before we roll it, though, uh, we wanted to try a new hotel. Uh, so for like one day, we stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge, which if you guys don't know, if you guys don't know, the really cool thing about this is the lodge is right on the safari, right on the savannah, right outside Animal Kingdom. So as you're sitting there on your balcony, a, a giraffe can walk right <laughs> up. So I'm getting ready to show you video. I woke up one morning and Colin was like, Jace, be very quiet. There is a giraffe outside our window. Roll the video. Here's that was right outside my oh, window. And a zebra. So there, there's a giraffe and a zebra, and it looks farther away than we are. I would say we are about 100 yards from where that is. We were on the second floor, and you know, right out there. I mean, normally you look at a parking lot. I had a giraffe outside <laughs> my hotel, but yeah, it was really awesome. That's at Animal Kingdom Lodge. You can't feed them, right? You can't feed them, you can't. Mm -hmm. And then the giraffe was fine. Did you see the giraffe uh, running away? You know why the giraffe ran away? There was a kid on the balcony next to me that was like, giraffe! <laughs> Screaming at the top of his lungs. And the giraffe looked up and was like, peace, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little kid, he was excited. Uh, okay, everybody, we're back. So are you. Grab the coffee, it's time for the hot dish. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you.
This drove me nuts while I was in Florida. There was the icebox challenge, remember that? Then there was the cinnamon challenge that teenagers were doing. Remember they were like sniffing cinnamon? I don't know. Uh, and now there's a new viral challenge, thanks to a net new Netflix movie that the internet seems to be obsessed with. It's with Sandra Bullock and it's called Bird Box. And this is the Bird Box challenge. Now, what is it? I wondered, I was like I'm trying to look at Mickey Mouse and, and then every, every time I turn on the internet, this was up. Here's a little bit from the trailer, look at this. We are going on the trip. Never take off your blindfold. We will make it. You take this and you go. I'm not leaving you. Please don't take my children. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. No. No, no, no. Now that is okay. So that's the audience so not impressed. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so that's a tra that's a trailer from the movie. Now, the Bird Box Challenge has people doing anything and everything with a blindfold on. Ugh. Now, because you see, thank you. Now, these people are smart. They get it. Now, there's Sandra Bullock in that with the blindfold on. Because I guess in the movie, you you're not if you if you take the blindfold off and you see the monster, you die or you turn into a plant or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, we've seen videos of people slamming into things like walls. There was a dad with a kid in a no. scooter. Yeah, yeah. Oh. A little kid, and the kid went right into the drywall. I mean, he was like, <laughs> so, and they're posting them online. Well, the popularity of the challenge has prompted, has prompted Netflix to have to put out a statement. And I can't believe that I'm reading this to you, friends, but the statement says, please do not hurt yourselves with the Bird Box Challenge. We don't know how this started, and we appreciate the love, but boy and girl, uh, have just one wish for 2019, and that is that you do not end up in the hospital due to making memes. Yes. <laughs> These are the times when you lose faith in humanity. You know what I mean? That's, when uh, Netflix and like Tide have to be your parent. Yeah, that you have to tell. tell I mean, yeah. not to do that. Yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't drink Clorox or you know a Wait, Tide what? pod, and then don't put a blindfold on. And I. Why does anybody think this is, uh, what, for, for four seconds of internet fame, you're going to run into a wall with a blindfold on? That's how bored people are. But I say, let them do it. Yeah. Survival of the fittest, man. We're going to, here's what we're going to do. You can't see it because you don't have a camera on them. But you guys know Director Leo. We're going to put uh, a blindfold on Director Leo. And he's going to direct <laughs> the rest of the show with the blindfold oh on. Yeah. So we're going to see how that buttons. goes. There's a lot to do. So who knows? Oh. And also, our okay. floor, look at this, our floor director, Evan, will also be with a blindfold today. There we go, yeah, yeah. You're good. Evan, go to the there left, go. Evan. No, careful. Evan, behind no, you, Evan. Lights. Yeah. TV screen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you think the beard is going to upset upstairs, that's really going to upset them, yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish, the new, singing, uh, this new, the new singing competition. It's called The Masked Singer, debuted on Fox last night. I know people, my father, hold on a minute. My father, this is how I know a show's gonna be good. My father-in-law, who's just a normal dude, his name is Carl, he owns a plumbing company, he's a dude. In the middle of, in the middle of Disney World, this is what he said. I really wanna watch that Masked Singer show. <laughs> I said, you? Like, that's how I know my, if it, my father-in-law is interested in it. Well, here's the deal, it features celebrities singing while wearing masks, and a panel of judges tries to figure out who the celebrity is. Look at this. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Well, that was the hippo. And he ended up getting eliminated at the end of the show. He is revealed to be professional football player Antonio Brown. The judges guessed different professional athletes, but not him. Now, as you notice, the show's hosted by Nick, Nick Cannon. When Nick was here in studio a couple months ago, he predicted, he goes, and not just because I'm the host of the show, he goes, this is a hit 
this format is a hit all around the world. He goes, people are going to love this. Well, listen to this. We found out the ratings. Just this, just an average. Is it just here? Many uh, five times the normal ratings wow. in that time slot. Yeah. Now it's premiere episode, but yeah. I'm curious. I want to watch it. But you only get to see one person, so it's a little not like super satisfying at the end because they have like a whole bunch of people, and you only find out the ones. So you have to like wait all season to find out who everyone is. Well, also, yeah. they're terrifying. What do you mean? The, the... the costumes were a little frightening, like something you'd see in a nightmare. Oh. The lion, we didn't show the lion. That one was scary. Well, so, uh, so off, the, off the season, they're going to reveal all of them? Oh, well, it's, it makes you want to watch for the... Because I bet, mark my word, I think Beyonce's in there. No. I really? do. Really? I... Do you think she'd do that? Yeah. I think so. If it's not Beyonce, I think someone on the level. Nick said as much on our show. He goes, you won't believe the level of talent that we have. So, I don't know. <laughs> Next in the dish, Olivia Newton-John wants the world to know she is not dead. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's great. Yeah. Second row, cl politely <laughs> claps, yes. Rumors have been circulating recently that she's clinging to life, but the actress who's fighting cancer says, not true. Check out the video she posted to Facebook to reassure folks. Let's look at this. Happy New Year, everyone. This is Olivia Newton-John, and I just want to say that the, uh, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated, to quote a very famous quote. And uh, I'm doing great, and I want to wish all of you the happiest, healthiest 2019 that's possible. And thank you all for your wonderful love and support for me and for my Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness Center in, in Melbourne, Australia. Thank you so much. Happy New Year! She looks great. Stupid tabloids. Amazing. Please, 2019, yeah, let us keep Olivia Newton-John. Yeah, stupid stupid tabloids. Yeah. And she's uh, 70, by the way. And speaking of people around that age group, before we go to break, I just want to say happy birthday to one of my very first crushes ever, Victoria Principal. She's 69 <laughs> today. <laughs> Pam Ewing, that's right, yeah. I had a poster of her in my locker. Yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Lots more to come, everybody. Grab another cup of coffee. Meet me back here in just a few minutes. Back after this. Good to be back. Coming up. Is it a reboot? Is it a remake? Is it a movie? What's happening with the original cast of 90210? We'll give you the 411210 in just a bit. Plus, best in show on our show. There's a big old dog show in St. Paul this week, and we have a preview courtesy of some special guests live in our studio. And the new year always brings the resolution to eat healthier. Find out how you can do that cooking with healthier cheese without sacrificing flavor. Chef Daniel Green is back with us live. It's all coming up, so stay right there. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. He was shaking because you scared him so bad and you're gonna ruin potential relationships. I have no doubt in my mind that you talked mad about me. I'm on my own business. You called us all You are a liar. This is why this is hard for me. I just feel like I should just go home. Every time I put myself out there, I get rejected. I can't accept a proposal. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Holy. Colton! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> you know you're watching just to see what caused that. That was funny in 2018, and it's funny in 2019 too. I just the oh my god screaming is the best sound bite we had last year. Well, we can't show you that clip uh, enough. We're counting down the days until the return of The Bachelor. The 20 the 23rd season starring Colt returns on Monday. Now, before we get to anything, I forgot to tell you. So, you know, at Disney World, there are buses, and they're like Disney buses, and Disney owns ABC, if you guys didn't know that. Well, I mean, Disney World's for children, right? So there's a child sitting next to me, and on the buses, there are all sorts of little posters advertising Disney properties. And one of the posters on the Disney World bus is for The Bachelor with the marketing tagline, what does he have to lose? Referencing his virginity and little Victoria sitting next to me, <laughs> I hear her talking. She's like, oh, look, there's, you know, Sleeping Beauty. And, then, and she goes, who's that, mommy? And then the, the mother was like, 
Well, that's a show where people try to date and she's reading the poster to the child. And I'm thinking, how are you gonna explain this one, mom? <laughs> yeah. Went right over Victoria's head. Yeah, anyway, Good. speaking of The Bachelor, there was a feud brewing. There is between two former contestants. Now, you guys remember, Shane's all worked up over this. Uh, you guys remember Ari from last season. That's the guy who dumped Minnesota's Becca. Well, yeah. Uh, well, prior to the season, another former cast member, Jeff Holm, tweeted, doesn't matter who gets out of the limo, I'll give 5000 to the charity of Chris Harrison's choice if Ari lasts one year with anyone. Oh. Well, it's one year later, everybody, and Ari has not forgotten. Remember, he ended up with Lauren B. She is pregnant, and they're getting married in two weeks. So Ari responded, look at this. Pay up, Jeff. Put that trust fund money into something positive instead of bottle service, oh. bleep. Oh. Oh. Jeff has not responded. Uh. The two were originally, the two were originally on Emily Maynard's season of The Bachelorette. Jeff won, but the relationship only lasted a few months. Does this surprise you? Love this. Like this you is. You know, right. too. He wrote that a year ago. He saved it in drafts, and he has just been waiting for the day to Boop. hit send. Yeah. He felt so good. This isn't really that surprising. There's a lot of like backstory to this. Those two were like besties after the season, and they like took over Scottsdale. They dated everybody they could get their hands on, and so they I think they In both Scottsdale? have a lot of dirt on each other. Yeah, it's not there's that big a lot of, a of town, stories. For heaven's sake, yeah. They got a college campus there. <coughs> oh well, there we go. Well, next in the dish, oh, true. we're learning. Just look it up. We're learning more about a possible uh, 90210 reboot, according to Paige. No, 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 oh no, no, wow! No, no, no. Didn't they already do that? No, 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 no. Hold you. Holds your applause until the ride comes to a complete stop. <laughs> Rumors of one happening are flat out wrong. Now listen to this. A series inspired by the show is being shopped around, but it would not include the characters like Donna, Kelly, Brandon, or Dylan. Instead, it's a ridiculous idea. It would be an hour long mockumentary that would find former cast members playing themselves and chronicle their efforts to get a revival made. Shannon Doherty and Luke Perry are the only originals not attached to this. At least one broadcast network is a re reportedly interested. I know whoever that network is, don't do this. This is the dumbest reboot idea I've ever. Nobody barely wants a reboot, let alone a mockumentary about a fake reboot. They did a reboot. It was trash. On CW, yeah. And you can't do this without Luke <coughs> and Shannon. And the only way this should ever happen is if they're actually going to be themselves again. Like, yeah. you know, this later down dumb. the road. This is dumb. It's like it's like the Spinal Tap version of 90210 or <laughs> Best in Show or Waiting for No one's asking for this. Yeah. Still ahead everybody. They're still in our dressing rooms getting ready, but we're previewing speaking <laughs> of Best in Show. We're previewing up an upcoming dog show in St. Paul this weekend, but next does he have a tattoo on his face or not? We're talking with our insider to the stars, Dax Holt, about that and more when we come back. Back after this, everybody. Is he hiding it under the hat? Oh, it's up there. Welcome back, everybody. Well, our half hour. Our half hour of hot dish continues this morning with our insider to the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dax Holt from Hollywood Pipeline. Hi, Dax. Hello, good morning. How ha are you? Good. Happy New Year, Dax. Oh. Oh. Same to you. Good. Uh, really quick, how did you and the fam celebrate? I know it's always, the, the Holts always go wacky for the New Year's. What did you guys do? Uh oh. Oh. Oh, I packed my fireplace and re replaced the rug in the house because we got a little out of control. Okay, we're having a bad connection, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Yesterday on the show, Tom and Alex talked about Justin Bieber's new face tattoo. But was it a joke? Did he really get this face tattoo, Dax? I'm very okay. confused about because we see this tattoo, and... Okay, we're gonna, guys, let's do this. We're, we're gonna try to reconnect with him. Control room, we're gonna cut him off. We're gonna try to re. Oh, see that noise? That was the sound of live television. That was like, bloop! That was the sound. So now, come here. 
So what we're going to do now is, uh, while we wait for Dax, you're just going to stare at Aaron and I for a few minutes. Right there. Wave to the people, Aaron. There we go. And look at this beautiful studio audience right here. There we go. Anyway, while we wait for Dax, if you're wondering what that story is about, so one day, J there was no, no tattoo on Justin's eyebrow. It was completely clear. Then the next day, he shows up with a tattoo that said Grace, written in cursive. And first of all, nobody knows how to write cursive anymore, so I don't know how that happened, but, but he has Grace written really small in like two, thanks Eric for laughing at that, um, in like 2.5 font size, right there. See, right there, before and after. So was this all a prank on us? I don't know, Dax got these photos, and it shows he doesn't really have it. So is it a prank? Is it not? I don't know. If you want more on this story, you can go to Dax's uh, story on Hollywood Pipeline. And you can also follow him on the Twitters, too. Just search for Hollywood Pipeline as we wait to get Dax. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos changed the way we shop. He was in Aspen recently, and he's setting a new trend yet again. Look at this. Look at these photos that Dax has. Yep, he's walking. He doesn't just walk into a store. He takes a horse. <laughs> well, this is what happens when you have stupid money. This is, you can ride into a Bath and Body Works on a horse. That's, I mean, no shirt, no shoes, no service, no horse. That's what happens, yeah. And fine, okay, Dax, are you back with us? I think so. There we go! Okay, so let's pick up where I was, I left off. We just showed Jeff Bezos on a horse. Uh, Dax, why is he on a horse? <laughs> I don't know. You, when you just have so much money, you don't have to walk into stores anymore. That's you can what go I on horseback. said. I mean, listen, if I had crazy money, I'd be like, what do I do next? Let's ride a motorcycle through a store, a helicopter directly in. I don't know. Yeah. It's just nuts. Well, let's get to Mariah Carey. She's an Aspen and taking totally candid videos and pictures, right, Dax? <laughs> well, here's the thing that I love about this is it's so unlike Mariah Carey to lay down in the snow and start doing snow angels with her kids that it's kind of refreshing you know it's it's not her all diva up she is laying down in the snow and I'm like, like good for you girl have some fun with your kids and don't worry about what anyone else thinks but of course there's paparazzi everywhere videotaping the whole thing yeah and if correct me if I'm wrong we're we're in the wrong angle doesn't she only like to be shot from the left <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. We are. I don't that, know if that's true, but I think that's hilarious, and I'm not surprised. I know. Now, Dax, we didn't hear you at the very beginning. Yep. How wild and crazy was it for New Year's at the Dax Holt household? Oh, I said that I had to uh, the next day repaint my fireplace and replace a rug in my house because we got a little out of control. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not even joking. What happened on that rug? <laughs> It was a it was a mess. Let's just say that. Um, did you cause the mess? <laughs> this was at like twelve fifteen, so that everyone was fully drunk by this point, and uh, we brought out sparklers. There were burn holes everywhere. I mean, it was it was a disaster. You had sparklers in your house? <laughs> Listen, at twelve thirty, when you're drunk, it sounds like a great idea. In yeah. hindsight, maybe not such a great idea. Kids, don't listen to Uncle Dax. Don't use sparklers in your house. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Have Happy New Year, Dax. Thank you, guys. Have Dax from Hollywood Pipeline. For more on celebrity stories, check out HollywoodPipeline.com. And again, don't use sparklers indoors. Still ahead, the dogs. The dogs have been groomed and are almost camera ready. We're talking about the upcoming dog show at the St. Paul River Center coming up this weekend. We'll be right back, everybody. Stay with us back after this. Bring out the Shetland sheep dog, please. I notice in these competitions, they don't do the basic sit up, roll over, fetch, heel they start at a higher level than that don't they yeah so those are the obviously the basic and, and that that is that taken into consideration so. at the start or i mean are you just judging by how well a dog is groomed all good questions fred willard <clears throat> that is a clip from one of my all-time favorite movies best in show from the year 2000 
starring the great Fred Willard. Well, we've got a big weekend coming up in St. Paul, and it's all about our furry friends. And once again, the Lando Lakes Kennel Club Dog Show takes over the St. Paul River Center. Give it up for Gary and his dog, along with Paula and her dog, and Kyle and his dog. Hi, guys. Gary, uh, we'll go down the line. Gary, introduce us uh, to your uh, your beautiful animal there. Uh, this is uh, Autumn. She's a 10-year-old Samoyed. She's a retired show dog. She is retired now. She is retired, yes. She is. Now, how long was she in the circuit? Uh, she ran for about five years. Five years. So. Is, now, is that uh, is that typical, Gary? Yeah, typically, it, dogs don't mature until they're around three years of age, and they're shown from three to about five or six, and that's when they're at their, their peak. Now, Gary, how do you know? Like, did you know pretty quickly because... Obviously, they're looking for the structure of the dog. They're looking for the face and everything. How, when did you know that you had a special creature with that one? Eight to ten weeks. Seriously? Seriously. How did, but how did, I mean, I know well, it's a you, lot of factors, but how did you know? You watch them as they're, as they're growing up, and you watch them move, you know, just running around as puppies, and you watch the structure of the movement, and you get to a pretty good feel of a dog that's going to be a special dog. And, and, it, and also the appearance, too. I mean, yes. Perfect, you know, perfect symmetry in the face and all that, that counts as well. Right. You look at the, you look at the angles, you look at the structure, you know, the depth of chest, the, all of the fine points. For every breed, there is a standard written of what the perfect, perfect dog is. Yeah. So you're always putting your dog against the standard. Gary, I apologize. My time with you is up. The other dogs are begging for attention right now. I got to go. <laughs> Paula, I'm going to move over to you. Paula, introduce this. Okay. I told you she was retired. She's done. She's officially done. Take a load off. Paula, I'm going to move over to you. Introduce us to your lovely animal. This is Ranger. He's a three-year-old Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Uh, wait, wait, repeat that. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. Say that again. Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. Duck tolling retriever? They're the smallest of the retrievers. They're bred to lure the birds in closer to shore for the hunter. Uh-uh. Oh, oh. And well, you said hunter. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 And then when the birds come in, the hunter shoots them, the dog retrieves them. Amazing. Okay, same. Okay, uh, 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 Paula, no, same. Here. Same question for you. When did you know that he was kind of special? About eight weeks. Wow. I told him, I told him every day he had to be good enough to stay. <laughs> yeah. And he, and he did. Paula, again, I have to apologize to you. We have That's to move okay. over. Uh, uh, Kyle, who do we have here? This is Ruckus. Uh, here. Uh, he's a no. two-year-old Alaskan Malamute. Teal. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. May, may I? May yes, I absolutely. Oh, Sit my down. goodness. Hi, <laughs> Ruckus. <laughs> Hi, Ruckus. Hi, Ruckus. I love you. I love you, Ruckus. Oh, I love you. Oh, my good. Yes. Oh, Ruckus. We're not being very showman-like, but that's all right. He okay. still got a lot of puppy in him. I would, how old again is Ruckus? Ruckus is two. Uh, same, about eight weeks, let me just answer for yeah, you. Exactly. Did you know? Yes, yeah, we had a lot of people that, this is our first show dog ever. We just started showing about a year ago. My wife started handling him. Um, so, so yeah, somebody just said you should really show him and we just jumped in it and Hi, he's Ruckus. been doing good ever since. Hi, <laughs> now Gary, if folks want to come down, they see the segment, oh, what, what, can, what can the spectators expect from the show? Well, this is a, a unique show because it has a whole lot of different things going on. Besides the confirmation judging, there'll be about uh, 1,600 dogs, over 100 different breeds represented, and they'll be judged on their confirmation qualities. But along with that, we also have uh, what we call Unleashed uh, .30, and this is an area where if you have your own dogs and you've always wanted something to do with them besides having a pet, there will be all kinds of demonstrations. There'll be dock diving, there'll be dog sledding, there will be weight pull, hunting test. Uh, there'll even be a dancing dog if you want to come down and see that. They'll also have the St. Paul Police Department. They will be showing their, uh, the canine units and what they are to do. We'll have rescue people down at clubs down there, so if you're looking for, to add a dog to your home, you may want to talk to them. And then we, one of the things that I do is called Meet the Breeds. So as you come down the escalator, uh, you will see a group of dogs, and there will be four to five breeds there from 10 to 3 on Saturday and 10 to 2 on Sunday, where you can literally talk to the breeders, get your hands on the dogs, interact with the dogs. So if you're looking to add a, a new family member in the next Make year sure or two. Make sure the breed is good for your family. Absolutely. The dynamics of and your family. And you'll be able to talk and you know, get your hands with the dogs. And if you've never been to a show, we'll also have dog show tours. Well, we'll have people will take you through the whole <coughs> Civic Center and try to explain to you the madness of what a dog show is. And I'm glad that you said that because, you know, being a dog lover all my life, my mother was a professional dog groomer for most of my childhood. If you're new to getting a dog, 
breeds really do matter. Every family dynamic is different. And sometimes people watch a movie and they're like, oh, I'm going to get this breed because it's cute on a TV show. Not necessarily the Absolutely. case. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the, most people pick dogs based upon their looks, not about their attributes. Uh -huh. So you need to yeah. find a dog that fits into your family's lifestyle. Fabulous. Very important. Uh, may I ask you, Kyle, so, the next time I'm sick, can Ruckus fill in for me? Actually? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm sure he Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ruckus? He'll come right down on sl uh, his sled. Because you are not <laughs> shy whatsoever, my friend. Well, give it up for Gary and Paula and Kyle, everybody, for more information on this weekend's dog show. Head to LandoLakesKennelClub.com right there. When we, come, when we come back, everybody, yesterday we talked about songs that turned 20 this year. Today, get ready to feel old. We're going to tell you what movies are turning 20. Ruckus and I will be right back after this, everybody. Bye, buddy. Beautiful. Oh, no. She ain't quitting? No. <laughs> mom said if I did, she'd look up my dad and marry him. So, has your mom kept your dad's life a secret? No, she never hid the fact that my dad picked his career over us. What she used to say? Once a carny, always a carny. Mm. Ma still cries when she sees a tilter world or a fat lady in a tube top. Oh, one of the best. That is a clip from the comedy Drop Dead Gorgeous. That was filmed here in Minnesota back in uh, 1999. Welcome back. It may be hard to believe, but that movie is turning 20 years old now that the calendar has flipped. Yesterday, we looked at classic songs turning 20. Today, it's all about movies. First up is the movie that actually rebooted the Star Wars franchise. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace came out 20 years ago. It was a prequel to the original Star Wars movies, and it led to two more sequel prequels. Uh, and I, my memory of this is very clear because in 1999, I had just kind of started at, at tele, in television. I started in 97. And if you guys, if you lived here, you remember the late great movie reviewer Bill Carlson uh, from WCCO. I worked at another, I worked at CCO at the time, and I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And Bill got to go to the premiere in New York, and I was, and I was working the night that he flew back, and he came into the newsroom, and I couldn't wait to ask him. I'm like, Bill, what did you think? And he looked at me, and I'll never forget this as long as I live. He looked at me, and he goes, "It was horrible." <laughs> It crushed my little Jedi dreams, let me tell you. We miss you, Bill. Next up, 1999 brought us a very classic romantic comedy starring Julia Roberts, best known for this scene. And don't forget, I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Every morning, that's what I say to Aaron Schwab when I come into the studio. <laughs> Every morning, right? Then I say it to Brad. Now, that, of course, is Notting Hill starring Julia Roberts as a Hollywood star who falls in love with just a commoner, a London shop owner, played by Hugh Grant. I still love that movie. It, it holds up actually remarkably well, and Julia looks exactly the same. Finally, one of the most talked about movies of the past decade also turns 20 this year. Remember this? I see dead people. That's right. That is Haley Joel Osment telling Bruce Willis that he sees dead people, girl. Uh, in the movie The Sixth Sense, that movie was a sensation with a major twist at the end when it was revealed, spoiler alert, a 20-year-old spoiler alert. Uh, I just don't want to ruin people's day today. Spoiler alert that Bruce Willis was actually dead throughout the entire movie. That's right. I will tell you, I have a friend, Kristen, who you guys remember that scene where uh, that little girl pushes the box uh, underneath the bed. Well, first of all, you know who that is, right? That is, uh, what's her, um, uh, Misha Barton from the OC, that little girl, the sick little girl. But my friend Kristen got so freaked out by that, that for three years, when she would get into bed, she had to jump into her bed <laughs> because she was so afraid that somebody was gonna pull her legs. Yeah, true story. Still ahead, everybody. If you're hoping to eat healthier into the new year, Chef Daniel Green is back. He's gonna show you how you can do that with sincerely, and I believe him, without sacrificing taste. He's in our kitchen, and we'll meet him when we come back. Back in a moment. Happy New Year.
may have made a New Year's resolution to eat a little healthier, and we're going to try to help you achieve that right now. Give it up for Celebrity Chef and our good friend, Daniel Green, everybody. Hi, Daniel. Welcome back. Howie, thank you. Now, you know about this because personally, and you've been very open about this on your, uh, your social media, you've lost weight in the past. You know, I've actually, uh, my goodness, 60 pounds I lost, and that was over 30 years ago. So, but it's been a mission of mine to really go and find products that are, I did it on low fat. Now in today's yeah. world, there's good fats and every diet I've seen change. Um, I had very little fat and very low carbohydrate. It's a miserable life. It's a horror. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, it's, yeah. But I try to make the best out of it by finding good options. Now, a lot of times we see, and there's so many different products out there, they don't taste very good on their own. No. But what can you do with them where you do compromise a little, but we just want to make sure we get the best out of it. Because we're concentrating on healthier cheese today yep okay and, and how to make it better i say healthier because yeah it's cheese is cheese girl and you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. well you know this these are all fat free and, fat -free I, cheeses, and that okay. does put a lot of people off i know so yeah. i want you to do something i want you to try some fat -free of these cheese is like non-alcoholic <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. so i want you to try now the, we've got a few we've got the slices and those can taste a little plasticky it's yeah. sometimes hard to know the difference between the plastic and the cheese yeah but i'm going to show you how different that works okay this is one of my favorite It's by president and they do a fat-free feta okay the reason i like this is it's actually a skim milk product so it's a really there's not much else in it but give that a try and try a little bit of these this what do you think of those? <laughs> that is horrible. Oh, you think? Okay, okay. Um, so then this one's not going to get much better then if you think that one's horrible. This is from, that's just a craft. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Bad. Is I it? Mean, it's, okay. I mean, but I mean, it just, but it. Okay, so what we're going to try and do is see if we can make these any better. Yeah, but thank then, you. But then this one, I want you to try this. This is from Whole Foods. Okay. This is a funny story. Um, I, I know they do this, and I asked the guy at the cheese counter, do you do the fat-free one? He says, oh, well, it's in the back, but it's really not very good. I was like, no, I know, it, it, it's okay. He goes, no, it's really not good. I said, well, you've got to try it with something else and see how good it can be. That's actually my favorite. It is? Okay, well, I yeah. think we can make that better. So I'm just going to get this going on here. Okay. Um, I've got a little sauce. I'm going to jump over yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is just cherry tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil, and this cheese. Okay. And I'll tell you a little bit of basil, but when you mix this together, and I want you to give this a try, okay. I think it completely changes that up, and I don't think you'd really notice that that is a fat-free feta in there. So again, it's how to use these products the best way you can. Okay, let me try this because, and this will be this will be a good test because I really did not like this on its own. No, exactly, and that's why I want to see if we can redo that. I would not know the difference. Exactly, exactly. I so, honestly wouldn't know the difference. So sometimes when we buy these products, because the texture is the same. But when we buy these products, it, it mm. actually is about using them the best way we can to disguise it a little bit, and then the one that you liked is going to get even better. Yeah, I really like now. This is. Again, the one that I really like, this is from Whole Foods, you're saying, Daniel? This is from Whole Foods. I like it, but it's really good if you mix it in. Now, I've just put it in a little bit of bolognese. This is very, very lean ground beef, so we don't want to replace it with other fats. We want yeah. to keep it all very low fat. Give that a little go and see if that's got a really nice flavor to it, because I don't think, again, it just tastes like a little bit of cheese in it. I'm going to jump over here. It, again, I'm not just saying... It tastes like cheese. I it mean, does, I, it, exactly. You it, yeah, you don't notice anything. So, you know, and I already really like that. There's a lot of products out there, but it's how we use them. I'll eat this for lunch, actually. Well, really I tell you, right, now, yeah, yeah. This, is, this, is, this is the best, and I think this is incredible. Okay. That, I think, does taste horrible on its own. Now, this is, yeah, this is the, low, this is the we're talking about the fat-free yep. slices. The, we are. Okay. Sorry, audience, I know. It's I like, know. Gotta... But take a look at this. When you put heat in it, yeah, and it comes out like this, okay. you have to give that a little try because that, I think, is quite incredible in how you get the difference. And this one has to be heated for it to be good. Yeah, I was going to say, now, because on its own, that was horrid. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I wouldn't... And I like, we, when we make grilled cheeses, up in the cabin, we yeah. use regular singles. I would not know the difference heated. Well, that's the thing. And what I want to do is there's lots of products out there. If you use them in the right way, you really can save so much fat. I mean, really, if we're on a less than a 20 grams of saturated fats a day, you will lose weight. And it doesn't take a lot to have that fat. So by using these products, you and, can make a huge difference. And you can kind of trick yourself in thinking, that, oh, you're getting a lot of cheese when it's just a little... 
Yeah. Uh, you can do a lot with that. You really can. Yeah, especially because I know a lot of people do. I do like just a, a ground turkey and just mixing yeah, a little I do bit the, of that I, cheese. I was actually going to do the turkey, I think, because then it's uh, incredibly low fat to start yeah. with. But that president cheese is really good when you mix it in with like pasta sauces. It's the and better again, president. W- when it's on its own, it isn't, that doesn't have exactly the same, but that's why these are uh, good ingredients to use when you cook. Give it up for Daniel Green, everybody, <laughs> for more information on everything he goes. Go to his website, danielgreen.tv, or find him on Facebook by searching Chef Daniel Green. And if you miss the segment, don't worry. We're going to be posting the whole thing on Facebook a little bit later. And don't forget, we're now on YouTube. Full episodes the same day will be posted, usually around 1 or 2 o'clock. Just subscribe to us. Search for Jason Show on YouTube. We'll be right back, everybody, to wrap things up back after this. Sincerely, that was, I think, my favorite. Shane's back with us, and I don't know about you, audience, and you guys watching at home could judge more. We've now come to the end of the show, and this show has been directed by Leo wearing a blindfold the whole hour. I think he did. I didn't notice any mess-ups. That might have actually been his best show. Probably, yeah. Just kidding, Leo, don't cut my mic. Watch, watch. he's going to take the most, un- there is no unflattering shot of you, but he's going to, yeah. That's so nice. He's going to take a horrible camera angle or something, yeah. <laughs> Well, in case, speaking of Shane, in case you missed yesterday, uh, we were both gone. And I do want to say uh, a couple things. Thanks to all of you uh, for putting up with the, you know, our holiday reruns. And thanks to our staff, including Jeff and Ted and uh, photographer Eric. We did some fabulous best of shows highlighting some of the great things that we've done, some fun things. So thanks to all of you. You guys seem to really like those episodes. So we'll do them again next year. And thanks to Tom and Alex. Thanks to Tom Butler and Alex Kendall for uh, uh, filling in yesterday. I really appreciate it. They did a great job. Well, Shane visited, you saw this yesterday, Shane visited the new indoor skydiving spot in Minnetonka. There was a reason they didn't send me to this thing, yeah. (laughs) And it ended up with a challenge. Look at this. You were so good. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you. I'd do this again for sure. Come back again and we'll start to work on flips and tricks. I'm not coming back unless it's with Jason. All right, well, let's do that and then you can make him, uh, you can embarrass him because you have so many good flight skills right now. Yeah. Right, right. (laughs) Well? No. No, I know. I I shan't be doing that. What about a New Year's challenge, a new adventure? Okay, Shane, how long have we been friends? What, What? what are the things that I hate the most? That's not heights. It is heights. No. It's called You're virtual... actually like a foot off the ground. You're still off the ground. <laughs> yeah. You stood on this couch before. That's just as high. That's and then true. he'll teach you how to do this. Now, what is that? That's Mike Silva. He was the coach. He is insane. Okay, so really quick, because obviously I didn't see the story. And to recap for those that did not, how does this work? Do you go in groups? Like... Do you recommend taking like your family and friends if they want to do this? I think it's more financially, it makes sense if you have a group to go with. They think it's like four to six people is what it can be like in a group. And then you each get a bit of fly time. You have lessons, they suit you up. He will just hold on to you the whole time if you wanted him oh to. Oh my goodness, look at that! It's, no, 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 no like human being should do that. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Well, you're not doing that. Oh, okay. He'll hold you. Oh, they hold, so he'll hold me the yeah, whole time? He, his challenge for me was to try and fly on my own. So by my third flight, I could do it on my own, sort of. And so he was there, though, the whole time. He's Is there a gonna, safe like, word? Go. Is there a safe word? Jason, they can't hear anything. They can't? You can't hear no, anything? all hand signals. Like, they teach you all the hand signals. Can you give them a safe hand signal? Like, get me out of here? Good luck in 110 mile per hour winds going like that. All kidding aside, <laughs> did you not, you know, don't lie to the TV people. Did you, were you A, scared? Were you legitimately scared? Yes. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, how scared were you? Uh, like a seven. It was. I felt good until I got to the point where it was a seven. Yeah. No, 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 no. If you're a seven, I'm going to be a ten. Okay, fine. I'll do well, it. Well, you will be a ten. I'll yes! be- this is great news. I, but no date. Give me a minute. I need to not just give me a fragrant moment. Okay, give me a moment. Okay, Mariah. Tomorrow on the show, I'm chatting live with one of my favorite uh, uh, actor, Leslie Jordan, star of the show, The Cool Kids. Plus, from St. Cloud to Supermodel, uh, we have a, a fabulous guest joining. Hel- Halima a- Aiden will be in studio tomorrow to talk about her incredible career. That and more right now. Go out there and be yourself, everybody. Nobody can.
Tell you're doing it wrong. See you tomorrow.